And a welcome to you inside Carver Arena here in downtown Peoria, Illinois. And after a 10-day layoff, the Braves return to the court. It's Bradley against the Jackson State Tigers. Good evening, everybody, and welcome to the broadcast again with Matt McLean. I am Brian Vito, and Matt, Bradley fortunate enough to have already played six games. They're four and two in those six. They got three more before the Christmas holiday, before heading into conference play, trying to bank some more wins and continuing to get better heading into that first Valley slate. Yeah, Brian, as you mentioned, it's been about a week and a half since we've seen the Braves on the floor tonight, an opportunity to get back in action against a battle-tested Jackson State team that's played a really tough schedule so far this season. For Bradley to be successful again tonight here at home, what do they need to do? We'll do you. That's the first That's the first one. We got Jackson State. Uh, they change defenses quite frequently. So for Bradley, it'll be identifying that quickly once you get into the half court and process how you want to attack. And the second key tonight is just that sustainability that Coach Brian Wardle has been preaching. We've seen the Braves play some tremendous basketball in spurts this year. Tonight, a 40-minute test for Bradley to come out and see if they can pass that and see how they respond to Coach Wardle's uh, claims. Well, Matt, we're about ready to get started. Let's quickly look at the starting lineups first for the visiting Tigers. They'll run out Darius Hicks, the senior Ken Evans, the redshirt freshman. Jonas James will get the start, the local kid out of Jackson, Mississippi, the 6'4 senior. Tristan Jarrett, another senior, the guy that's the preseason SWAC player of the year. And Javius McKinnis will round it out, the junior for the Tigers. Bradley going with the same lineup as starting lineup as they had the last time they played going up against Lewis, second time in a row this specific group. Ari Boya, the junior center. Terry Nolan, junior, also a junior. Sean East, the sophomore transfer from UMass. Elijah Child, he's been here all four years. This is year number four. And Vile Tabanainen, the sophomore, making his second start of the year. The second ever matchup between these two programs is underway as the Braves control the tip. First pass is knocked and taken away. And quickly the other way is Jarrett flips one up. He's averaging 14 points per game at over 17 points per game a year ago. Second team all slack and as I mentioned moments ago, Voted the preseason player of the year. Floater in the lane, spins out. Every part but down. And the Braves will push it the other way. Child leading the Braves in scoring. Gets a tip in from Ari Boya. Boya, the 7-1 junior out of Cameroon, averaging five and a half per game. Gets the Braves on the board in the first bucket of the night. Jonas, who's their a top assist getter with eight, gives to Jarrett. They go on the low block for McKinnis. Baby hook in the lane, and he matches his counterpart down low. Boya with a two. Yeah, nice move there by McKinnis to be able to get that deep, get the right little hand hook shot, and in for Jackson State, tie game early. Boya gets a step, hands to Nolan, but first he ran over. Ken Evans, and that takes some courage to step in front of the 7-1 Boya. Yeah, nice spin there by Boy, looking like a guard there, this, this seven-footer going down the lane. But uh, yeah, nice job sliding over and picking up the charge, earning a possession there for Jackson State. You got to look at Wayne Brent a moment ago, the head man for Jackson State in his eighth year. Spent some time as an assistant around college basketball, including Ole Miss, but then most previously before Jackson State was a high school coach. And now again, like I said, eighth year with the Tigers, and that's something that the Braves have been able to do and something that Jackson State can do at times quite frequently, and that's turn the basketball over. Yeah, really nice active hands there by Terry Nolan to kind of create that disruption and out of bounds on Jackson State. We see Jackson State starting a man. Here's a quick zone, wide open shot for Vila Tavaninen. And that was right where you said at the top, right, is the Braves' recognition of what defense Jackson State's going to go with on that given possession because it's going to change. It's going to be very fluid throughout the night. Yeah, absolutely. And this is where Braves, the Braves are going to want to attack too as well. Get back in transition so that Jackson State can't throw a different look at them. And we're going to have a quick look here for Elijah Childs. 
In a rhythm, Deuce is pulled down on the rebound by McKinnis, who's averaging 12 boards per game, averaging a double-double, 13 points to go along with those 12 rebounds. Boya cuts the baseline off, and McKinnis steps on it. Yeah, good recognition so far for Bradley. Where we talked about at the top, you know, coming down, figuring out what defense Jackson State's going to throw at you. Looks like this possession is going to be straight up man to man. So Bradley going to be able to attack this. They played a lot of teams that play primarily man to man. So pretty straightforward on this one. There you get a look at Brian Wardle, sixth year here on the hilltop in Peoria. Coach of the two time defending Missouri Valley Conference tournament champions. Looking pretty swapped tonight. I like that color combo. Yeah, the little the dark maroon. I don't yeah, know. Yeah, it's solid. I could be colorblind at times, but I think I think that might be a dark maroon. <laughs> I, I know the colors of the rainbow, and that's right. about it. Same. Tom and Ian, and back to Nolan. And here comes the ball screen from Boya, knocked away, and it'll go back over to Jackson State. Yeah, Ken Evans just kind of disrupting Terry Nolan there on the crossover. Evans able to get in there and kind of knock it away out on Nolan. And they earn the possession where a good look there. Not going to go for Jared, though. And the Tigers are going to take a lot of contested shots early whenever they feel like they can get space and they can knock it down. They're going to fire it up. Tom and Einan for another three. This one's short. Into the lap of Boya. Braves can't convert on a second chance, and here come the Tigers the other way. Bradley leading 5-2. to two. Pull up is no good by James in the corner. East has been hot from three. This one off left, and it goes back to James, who's followed by Boyle. And we'll see our first substitution of the night in the form of Deshaun Henry, who comes in for Ari Boya. And Matt, Deshaun Henry, in any role you put him in, mm. he's been very successful throughout his career, and he's been really, really good as a player. He is just Bradley's blue guy. Whatever you need him to do, he's going to do. He's going to put this team together. Uh, if you need him to rebound, you know he's going to be there. If you need him to act as a guard, which, you know, he has become way more uh, capable of handling the ball and guarding guards on the defensive side of the ball. I mean, whatever Deshaun Henry needs to do, uh, he has been. He's one of the most important players for the Braves. He's been tremendous through six games this season. Jackson State just one of six from the floor to start. They get this one to go, so now two of seven. That's Jarrett. That's his first bucket. He's quickly the other way, flips it up. Henry to Nolan, the shot clock will not reset. It didn't touch the rim. And you see just, just from this first four minutes, Jackson State, all these defenses that they've been playing, very disruptive. It looked like a clean block there from James, but they're going to call him on the wrist as well for the foul. Free throw's coming back for Bradley. And it'll be East at the line for two when we come back. 5-4 Bradley early on. Bacon. The usual gifts are just not going to cut it. Good luck. Brian Beto, Matt McClain back with you. A little bit more on the Braves' opponent tonight. Again at 0-3, but have had a very difficult schedule. Ole Miss, Mississippi State, and Louisiana Tech to start. We talked about Tristan Jarrett and his scoring prowess and what they've averaged scoring margin-wise. Uh, so far this year. So very difficult test uh, for the Tigers to begin the year, including this one should put them in good shape heading into SWAC season, much like the Braves who have tested themselves in non-conference as well, heading into uh, to Valley play. But Jackson State kind of been in the news recently too, and I'm sure they're tired of hearing about it. You know, we got the basketball program, but football program hired Deion, San Deion Sanders. Yeah, man. not too Big shabby. News. Yeah, prime time, right? And you, and you probably... <laughs> As a Packers fan growing up, probably didn't love Dion solely because he was on the Niners the year they won True. the Super Bowl, and a couple years later he was on the Cowboys. Man. The Packers were always in the mix with those two. Respect teams. the game, though, right? Yeah. <laughs> That's an exciting hire for their program. Maybe I can bring some more attention to the program and get some higher-level recruits to say, hey, Deion Sanders, let's 
Let's go play for that guy. Yeah, I, I actually did read that they had a really good recruiting day. And of course, we all we know about Bradley's football program. They haven't lost in 50 undefeated, years. Undefeated. Great Yet dad, again. You know, <laughs> I got two kids. I'm a dad. I got to throw in a couple dads. Hey, I, I like it. Terry Nolan. Terry Nolan the other way. Throws it down viciously. The tomahawk off of the steel. Terry Nolan a little business first. Get the flush. And the Braves able to create offense from their defense. And they get a board on the other end. Childs zings it ahead to Tavaninen. And now gets the screen from Childs. They get the entry pass to the senior from Kansas City. A flashing Henry couldn't handle it. Here come the Tigers the other way. And it's stripped and stolen away by Sean East. This Eyes ahead, up to Henry, pump fake again, and he's fouled. Good hustle by McKinnis to not allow the easy two to Henry. And that's what Sean East can bring. You saw it when he was on the other end of the floor, looking up. He Eyes were eyeing. up immediately. Yeah, eyes up immediately, looking at the floor, the baseball pass. Just the quick transition opportunity that Sean East provides for this, pro for this program. Uh, extremely valuable, Henry DeWine. And Henry, who's, this won't affect his field goal percentage, but he is shooting 70% from the field. And even as of late, it's been even better and more efficient offensively. Came in averaging 12.2 points per game. It's been higher over the last couple of games. Since missing that game against Oakland due to a non-COVID related illness, he's been playing, as it's hard to say, his best basketball of the year in this game number seven, but he's been really even better as of late. McKinnis backing in on Childs. That's a tough shot, but he does get it to go. Yeah, really tough shot. McKinnis is one of those guys who kind of known for his defensive prowess preseason, defensive player of the year, but he can flash on the offensive end as well. That little, you know, 15, 16 jumper on the baseline. Nothing but net. Nice look there for McKinnis. Childs in the paint. He scores. He yeah, asking for the foul, too. He definitely got hit on the forearm going up, but no call. Able to fight through that contact. That mid-range jumper for Elijah Child is so valuable. That's his, his, his first bucket. He's the only Brave to score in double figures in all six contests leading into tonight. McAdoo off the bench. Teardrop and one. What do you know, 7.14 Central Time. The bank is open. Kevin McAdoo <laughs> driving down the lane. I got dad joke, jokes too. Yeah, you're, yeah, you got the laugh out of me, so I recognize. <laughs> Must have been a dad joke. Though. Nice job there by McAdoo, just taking the lane. I mean, nobody stopped the ball in the drive. He floats it up when he feels the contact, and he gets it to go. Get another look at that. And that's created, too, by... You know, he's recognized as a guy that can knock down a three, so sometimes you can overhelp. He's able to, to drive and get the bucket, and he's now a perfect three of three from the line this season. And McAdoo's been such a spark off of the bench, too. Brian Wardle kind of talked about him earlier this week, saying, you know, he's a guy that we really trust. Uh, he's got a high ceiling, right? But the, the valuable minutes that he brings off the bench is such, uh, it really brings a boost to this team. He, you, you got a guy like McAdoo who it, basically they view as a starter who can come off of the bench and, and really bring a spark to the program. Yeah, and they love his ability to score the basketball off the bench and will continue to get better as the season rolls on. That's a tough shot and make from Tristan Jarrett off the inbounds pass. Yeah, Jarrett's a guy who can really fill it up quick. Last year, his junior year with Jackson State, he had back-to-back -back games at one point in the season where he had 30 points. Uh, just a guy who can really put it in, and we've seen it here early in display. He's got five points already. Yeah, just two players have scored for the Tigers. Jarrett with five, McKinnis with four, and now James will have the chance here to get in the scoring column. He's a perfect six of six from the stripe this year. Got the local product out of Jackson. And I figured the audience knows this at home, but in case they don't, it's Jackson, Mississippi. Hey, hey, 
Braves haven't played a SWAC school since 2013. That was a home win against Alabama State, but they are a perfect 4-0 against the conference all-time heading into tonight. Danielle Kingsby, the senior, been in for about a minute or so. Directing traffic, gives it to Henry. There's Nolan on the right side, and here comes the ball screen from Mast. Back out, Henry tries a three and has a chance for four. Yeah, four point play opportunity to Sean Henry. He has been making those three pointers at a higher clip every year down his career at Bradley. He's able to knock that one down on the wing with the hand in his face, hand on his arm. He makes it to Sean Henry, four point play opportunity. And Matt, each each of these players, you know, you work on stuff during the season, but during the off season, you continue to try to add to your game. And that's one thing that Deshaun Henry said going into the season while he's continued to get better, like you mentioned, that was really something he wanted to, to be more consistent with and shows the threat from deep there and does convert on the very rare four-point play. Yeah, all summer, Deshaun Henry said coaching staff, he was up in the gym getting as many shots up every single day as possible, just trying to be more consistent three-point shooter, and he's been pretty good so far this season. So Bradley enjoying their largest lead. It is 10, just about eight minutes into the half. And now this is where he's really deadly underneath. And there was some contact there, no whistle. And Jarrett pump fakes. Batted around, goes to Tavadainen, shovels it over to Nolan, flicks it ahead. Kingsby who steps back and a good closeout. There by Tate. Kingsby lobs it up for Henry, who was bumped from behind, and that probably prevented an easy two. Yeah, nice little play there, Henry. Flashing the baseline as Kingsby's driving. He's gonna get the opportunity for free throws. That's on Henry, a huge first off the bench for Bradley. He has his squad up 10, 11.52 to go in the half. Pride in exceeding your expectations. Discover the Morton difference today at MortonBuildings.com. Brian Beato, Matt McLean with you. Bradley out to a 10-point lead. They got a lot from their bench, Matt. Looking at the numbers really quickly, 9 of the 19 coming from Henry and McAdoo and the Braves getting that scoring punch off the bench. Yeah, and that's so consistent what Bradley's able to get off the bench. So many guys that can come in and be a threat. We see tonight, you know, uh, Deshaun Henry's just been an instant spark for Bradley. Kevin McAdoo came in, made a big play. So what Bradley's getting off the bench so far is really kind of bolster bring them into this 10-point lead early on just eight minutes in. They have two fast break points. They had 21 against Lewis. As they want to continue to push, especially when they get stops on the other end. So Henry already was six. He'll shoot two here. There's already one of one. Came in at 69% from the free throw line. And the Braves now six of seven. <laughs> from the strike. Wesley Taylor has it for Jackson State, who just checked in, guarded by Nolan. Taylor, the freshman out of Olive Branch, Mississippi. Good footwork Ooh. inside by Jarrett, who now has seven for the Tigers. Yeah, pretty move by Jarrett. The Euro step around the defender and gets it to go. Tavaninen pulls up, left it short, and I think that's going to stay here. Yeah, it is. And Henry has caused major problems underneath for Jackson State. Yeah, once again, Deshaun Henry is always being active, always attacking the glass. And I mean, that's one thing Bradley's really hung their hat on this year in terms of uh, the, the success for why they're at, be able to come out here and start the season with four wins. I mean, that they always hit the glass. The rebounding statistics for Bradley is just off the charts. And tonight already, Bradley out rebounding Jackson State 14-6. Uh, to six, So a big advantage already early on. And four of those at the offensive end, and they've really been elite in that category, really the last couple of years, but even this year. Out of the top eight individual offensive rebounders in the this Valley, Bradley has five yeah. of them. 
The number two guy, which is number one on Bradley, is the guy at the foul line right now. That's Jashawn Henry. They just know how to create extra possessions for themselves. Yeah, Bradley's leading the leading the Valley in terms of offensive rebounding, and they rank 37th nationally in, in, in that category as well, too. So really just been a key to their success. And they're doubling up the Tigers as Henry goes back to the bench. But not bad. He was in for what? Seven minutes? Eight points. Not too bad. Excuse me, nine points. And we see Bradley pick up this uh, three-quarter court zone press. So Jackson State's able to kind of break it. And now they set back up. They're in this 3-2 zone now that they fall back into. And what do you know? Jackson State, 10 seconds on the shot clock. They've hardly ran a lick of offense this possession. They skip it. They get it to Jared, who draws the double team. Good personnel recognition by the Braves. Forces a tough shot, and Nolan can't keep it in. Yeah, that's too bad. Really good defensive possession there by the Braves, but a little carelessness in the backcourt. Jackson State's going to get another opportunity here, and that's already the sixth turnover for Bradley. And Jackson State shooting just 31.3% from the floor. The Braves came in seventh in the NCAA with a field goal percentage defense of 33.9. Just incredible when you think about it. Mm. And nice on cue, yeah. Jackson State <laughs> knocks one in. That's Hezekiah Quinlan. Skip opposite corner, Nolan, and I think he stepped down the on the sideline at the heel on there. Good eyes, Matt. That's one of the, yeah, right in front of us. <laughs> but uh, it's one of those, where you catch it and you immediately look down at your own feet and the ref standing right there, you're like, well, you can't hide that one. <laughs> yeah, it's turnover number seven, though, for Bradley, too. You got to take care of that basketball. They've done such a good job doing that in terms of, you know, being on the positive side of that assist to turnover ratio that so many coaches look at to be such a key thing. But uh, Bradley, a little careless with the basketball already. Seven turnovers in this first part of the first half. They go underneath to McKinnis, who again pushed out Mass defending him, making it a tough turnaround deuce. This time McKinnis can't get it to go. And Nolan, full speed ahead, turns, and a little too long. Yeah, you can't let him get that deep, though. He gets so deep into the turnaround, the momentum takes the defender away. Nolan's got to make that little six-footer. Very difficult shot again on the other end. Jarrett. Hoping for a foul, he's not going to win that case. Yeah, no foul, no tip. Quick possession for Jackson State with nothing doing. Get another note on Bradley's defense, and you look at some of the opponents they've held under 60. They gave up 51 points to Xavier at Xavier. Xavier's 7 and 0 right now. At all the other six games Xavier's played on, they've scored at least 76. There's Nolan from the top of the circle for three. Yeah, wide open. Looked like a defensive lapse there by Jackson State, but Nolan wide open from straight away. Nothing but net. So every other game the Musketeers have played, they've scored at least 25 more than they did in their game against the Braves. Now, well, that was a wild game, too. I mean, Bradley was so good defensively. To keep Xavier a team uh, with that class offensively, you see what they're doing against everybody else, but Bradley holds them to 51 in their own gym. Just uh, a, a testament to Brian Wardle's crew to be able to go on the road and play that well. Foul on Tavaninen, so it'll be free throws coming up. And this will be from Ken Evans. When a small sample is just two of six. Get another look and be like just a little too late. Yeah, he was, was a little late getting out to his defensive assignment too. So he, he leaves that baseline open and he's kind of turned down. He, he beats him baseline and then uh, just not able to get over and slide his feet over in time to, to get down that uh, block attempt. But James is going to have another free throw attempt here. Excuse me, Evans. Evans now with two tonight. Jackson State, two of four from the foul line. East to walk it up. It's the double. Nice help, help there. Yeah, that's Quinlan on the help. In trouble as East gives the child. Still plenty of time on the shot clock, 12 to go. Really good defensive possession here by Jackson State. They got Bradley all sorts of frazzled. Kicked it out by Childs, Charged. but not before an offensive foul on Elijah Childs. Yeah, Taylor was able to slide over. Really nice defensive awareness there. 
That's the sixth team foul on Bradley. Both teams in the bonus the rest of the way. Taylor, who just made the nice defensive play, will bring it up. Gives to Evans, guarded by McAdoo. Taylor three is off the mark. Henry able to get it, and the Braves have a chance to push. East, back to Nolan, his three. Quinlan tips it back to McInnes and quickly back the other way, and a quick launch for three for Evans is down. Yeah, and that quick game, the quick pace is gonna go for the favor of Jackson State. They're gonna wanna speed up Bradley all night. We see two quick possessions back and forth, and it gives Jackson State a three-point advantage in that in that one little series. And that's the pace that Jackson State's gonna wanna play the rest of the evening. Here comes the ball screen. East gives to McAdoo. Active hands by the Tigers. It'll stay with the Braves. Out of the timeout, 7.33 to go. Bradley up seven. You're watching the Valley on ESPN. Bradley up seven, 7.33 to go. And you know, it's Christmas time. One of the officials is thinking about what he might want from, from Santa this year. Checking out that Harley and you know what? Why not, right? Somebody riding out, right out on the court in the Harley. We miss Kaboom doing it this we year do. without the typical uh, fan atmosphere that we have here at Carver Arena. We usually roll out the red carpet for Thinking Walters about Brothers it. and everything. And hey, that, that wouldn't be a bad Christmas gift, Ryan. You're, you might be onto something. <laughs> not bad at all. Ryan Beto, Matt McClain with you. Bradley again up seven, led by as many as, as 13 here in the first half. Just five to shoot. Yeah, coming out of the, going. Yep. Two, McAdoo's got a launch, he does! Oh. It was online, just a little bit short. Yeah, Bradley usually so good at coming out and uh, being able to convert on out-of-bounds plays, out-of-timeouts, and it looked like there was just a quick lapse of judgment there when Sean East got the ball in and uh, not able to get a good look off of McAdoo. Uh, almost, almost made that 29-foot three ball. Three from Taylor is no good. Wrestled away and falls into the hands of McAdoo. Look at those handles. Great by handles. Yeah, absolutely. Childs is doubled. Zings it corner. McAdoo three is down. Elijah Childs so aware. He immediately feels he's got his defender on the left side. He's got help coming from the right. Immediately swings it out to the other corner. McAdoo wide open. This time he does connect on that three ball. What a pass in rhythm. Yeah, Shooter's pass. best friend right Shooter's there, best right? friend, and right into McAdoo's shooting pocket as, as we get a swipe from Kingsby in the east, and off to the races we go again. Yeah, what hands by Kingsby. Childs thought about it, gives back to east, top of the key. Elbow jumper is off the mark. Evans to walk it up. Approaching six minutes to play here in the half. McClellan has it again, guarded by Kingsby. Now four to shoot. Oh, wow, bounces in. And a buzzer beater. Yeah, I mean, the 25 seconds, Jackson State did absolutely nothing. Just pass it around the perimeter, and then they get one to go. That's a, that's a lucky break there from Jackson State, and then a nice hustle down here to get another steal. Kingsby tripped up and there was no foul called. And a timeout taken by the Tigers. We'll keep it here with you, 5.23 to go. So Brian Wardle saying to the refs, looked like there was a little bit of a kick action down there on the trip maybe for Kingsby, but. Yeah, one of those like, he didn't fall on his own, right? right? <laughs> yeah. But that's all part of it. It's all part of the game. Get another look at it. Yeah, yeah, pretty pretty clean. Pretty clean. That great hustle, too, from Jackson State. The ball on the floor. Just get on it and get another possession for your ball club. Down eight here. Good first half for them. Staying within distance here. Kind of just chipping away at this Bradley lead. Jackson State able to stay within striking distance here going into halftime. Big key here this last five and a half minutes to stay within striking distance. Yeah, so the Braves coming back with East Mast, Kingsby, Henry, and Nolan. Oh, 
Evans. Another local product. Great defensive yeah. pressure by Daniel Kingsby. Ten seconds on the ball. He's able oh, to get the steal and, he... and then unfortunately gives it right back. And Jared able to score. Cuts the Bradley lead to six. No one to bring it up this time. Downhill is left alone as it kicks it out. Kingsley back up top. Mast for three. Nobody boxed out Kingsby, and the Braves get another chance. Yeah, I love the intensity of Jackson State's playing with defensively, but they gave up the second chance opportunity, and East makes them pay off glass. East initiates the scoring this time around. That's his first field goal tonight. He's got three points. Nice pass. It wasn't ready for it, though. Hicks caught off guard, and it's going to go the other way. BU ball. Too many hands in the cookie jar, and the Braves able to force the turnover. They're going to get bonus free throws as well. Didn't see who they had on that. Looks oh, they like called Henry. foul. Yeah, they, got, they got, the, they got um, a foul against Jackson State, and it looks like it was Nolan. He's going to, it was fouled, going to get the visit to the charity stripe. His first free throws, where he's been very good this year, 83%. 6'4", junior out of Baltimore. Mike somehow comes away with his own miss. It's deflected off of his shoulder out of bounds. It'll go back to the Tigers. Good effort on both ends. And James will bring it up. 8.3 points per game for James. Lobbing back door. Oh, yeah. No one home. Except for Sean East. Definitely a design play, nobody there. There was no screen there on the backside and quick turnover. East had a good Great look. Rebound. Mast keeps it alive. Nolan to Kingsby. He made his last two threes the other night at this time. Mast again, and he's pushed, I believe, and he'll shoot one in the bonus. Great effort by multiple effort play yeah. by Rink Mast. Tremendous hustle there from the freshman out of the Netherlands, Rink Mast. Getting another opportunity for Bradley, who's up eight. Brian Vito and Matt McLean back with you. And before planning your trip to St. Louis or to follow the 2021 State Farm NBC Men's Basketball Championship, be sure to download the Arch Madness app or visit archmadness.com. Both resources have all the information you need to know about the tournament schedule, hotel accommodations, and other fun events during the tournament. Log on to archmadness.com or download the app on your phone today. 2020 on the NBC on that banner there. You gotta like that. It's a place uh, Bradley fans have been happy to go to the last couple years in St. Louis. I was doing a uh, a session with a Zoom session with Coach Ward this summer for Q&A on, on YouTube and one of the fan comments was like, have we considered making the State Farm <laughs> or making the, the Enterprise, Enterprise Center our, our home venue considering we play so well there? Hey, Not that nothing against the Carver. They love it here, but it was just a, a joke about how well we played there. The a 6-0 record the last two years yeah. kind of speaks for itself. I, maybe we could do a little relocation. I don't know, Brian. <laughs> <laughs> As Mass knocks down the first, and I'm glad he made that. Not only, obviously, because it put in a point, but it rewards the effort that he put in just prior to the timeout. Two offensive rebounds from the red shirt freshman. He does end up with the split, but guess what? The Braves get another chance. Yeah, off the toe, the long rebound comes out to James and just right off of the tip of his foot, straight out of bounds to his head coach over there. <laughs> not too pleased with that one, but Wayne Bratton knows there's not much he can do about that one. And they get it right back. Another steal for Jackson State. Jarrett. And given away back to Child. Race quickly the other way. Top of nine and gets it into Mast. Backing, backing up with the right and scoring. Love to see that from Rink Mast. So much of his game that Bradley fans have seen so far this season is perimeter based. But he just takes his man right there on that right block and just goes into him. The right-hand hook shot, Rink Mast able to flip it up and in. 
points. He's now got three to go along with four rebounds. Henry still leading the way for Bradley with nine. Jarrett for the Tigers also with nine. Childs sink into the floor. Braves gonna push ahead anyway. Nolan back to Childs who is on his feet. Tavanainen on the ball fake. Now Nolan lobbed underneath. They got the mismatch they want. Mass goes up and scores off the glass. Beautiful shot fake there from Mass. They will just get his man up in the air. The help was coming from the backside, but he's able to just get the shot up before it gets there. Great job by Rink Mass up and in for two. More energy off the bench and scoring for the Braves. Mass is at a monster couple two minutes. And and forces a turnover. Yep. Absolutely, Brian. You said it. He comes out, he gets top side on that. It looked like Jackson State was looking to go over the top on the lob, but just the presence there on the front side, they weren't able to get the release on the back end there and throw right out of bounds back to BU. Hard work on both ends for Mast. And they get it to Childs underneath. There's the there's double, double again. There's out the top of nine in. His three is a tad too strong and a foul that's going to be called on Childs. And that's the seventh team foul on the Braves. So one of the bonus coming up for the Tigers is the Braves have stretched out their lead to 13, which matches their largest of the evening. So Childs will take a seat. That's two on Eli. Boya also with two. Hicks with three for Jackson State. And McKinnis gets the front end to go down. Bring it down to a 12-point game here with two minutes left. Key two minutes here for Bradley. Going into the break to just kind of maybe extend their lead. Get a bigger cushion going into the break. And missed the second one. East is tough to stop downhill and shows why. Man, that little hesitation dribble there from East. His man just kind of sagged off him. He said, you're not going to step in front of me. All right, I'll take it all the way. And kind of uses his body language there to just kind of protect himself from the defender and flip it high off the glass. Five points for East. Jared around Nolan. He's held up by Nolan. And he'll shoot one and one. Yeah, it's one of the things that the NCAA has been talking to officials a lot about is uh, these hip checks that, you know, Everybody wants to do the hip check, kind of give a little forearm, give a little hip bump, but Terry Nolan just kind of rides him off on the baseline and they call the foul there. That's what Brian Worrell said. His, his hands are straight up. Hands are straight up. Jared makes the first. First player in double figures for either side tonight with 10. And you said it earlier, and we talked a little bit about the Braves first in scoring D and defensive field goal percentage in the Valley. We talked about their national ranks. Second in scoring margin. Nolan steps into a jumper, and it's good. Love that whole possession. Sean East comes up. They brought a double at, at uh, Jackson State brings a double out to him. That brings Rink Mass guy. So whoever's over on Terry Nolan, okay, his defender is going to come out to Mast. Great skip pass there. And Terry gets the shot fake, gets the defender in the air, steps into the jumper. Really pretty possession there for BU. Great recognition. That's the personnel mismatch that Bradley does such a good job of recognizing. Baby hook on the other end by McKinnis goes down. Solid first half for McKinnis. He's got seven points, six rebounds on pace for another double-double. East, Nolan's corner three. It's good. Yeah, way too easy again. The defense tries to come and overcommits, and Terry Nolan, once again, wide open. He knocks it down. Good job from Terry Nolan. He gets himself into double figures now for 10 points with BU. Talk about a stocking stuffer. He <laughs> has been a stat sheet stuffer this year, and again tonight, 10 points. He's got a rebound, two assists, three steals, and a block for Bradley. Yeah, and a key thing, too, as well, that quick three that they got off that possession gave him the two for one, and they're going to get even 17.7 yep, here's here. The timeout. Here's the timeout where Bradley thrives off of these drawn up plays. So a good break here at the end of the half for BU. Yeah, you said it. The ATOs have been a major strength for the Braves, really on both ends of the basketball. 
And let's see what they go to. Still plenty of time, 17.7 to go. Braves now shooting nearly 47% from the floor. 42 points. And we've seen some high point totals at Carver this year as well. The 80s against South Dakota State, we saw triple digits, of course, as well earlier in the year. And what was the largest point differential in Bradley basketball history? Yeah, 105 against points, not too bad. 105 to 32. 95 against Lewis the last time out, which was a very quick 10 days. All right, let's see what Bradley draws up here. They're going to have about 15 seconds to work with here in the half court. Comes the staggered double ball screen for East. And the return ball screen to Mass. He's open. He's got a three. Looks good, just a little too strong. And that'll do it for the first half. Great look. And that ATO, just a little too strong. But a good finish to the half for the Braves. And they enjoy one of their largest margins of the night. 42 to 27 is the score. We'll step aside, take a time out, be back with first half stats and more. You're watching the Valley on ESPN. Halftime at Carver Arena, Bradley leading Jackson State 42 to 27. Brian Beto and Matt McLean with you in a entertaining first half. The Braves led by as many as 17, lead by 15 after the first 20. But after tonight, let's check out what's happening, Matt. We'll start with the Tigers. We talked about they're still searching for their first win, but they've had a very difficult schedule to start. That difficult schedule continues not only tonight, but coming up in a couple of days as well this weekend at Iowa State. Going to Ames there. Then they'll get into SWAC play shortly after that. And these games probably tested them. Uh, you know, this game, the game against Old Miss, Mississippi State no going into the SWAC season. Yeah, Brian, how would you like to start your season with eight straight games on the road? That's what Jackson State's looking Not at. Like so. That. Yeah, but like you said, really good experience before uh, they'll have that home opener on January 9th. Uh, they'll be looking forward <laughs> to some home cooking, I'm sure, by that point. And for Bradley on the other end, just three non-conference games remaining, including tonight. One more on the home non-conference slate. That's this Saturday against Miami, Ohio. Another MAC opponent that the Braves will uh, will take on here. They took on and beat Toledo, who's played very well since that season over. Okay. That's a really quality win for the Braves to open the season. So they'll take on Miami, Ohio. And then they'll visit Missouri on Tuesday, a team that just knocked off Illinois in the annual bragging rights game. So really strong finish to the non-conference slate for, for the Braves as well, heading into the conference play at Valpo. Yeah, and that experience that they'll get playing that 16th ranked Missouri team on the road, a uh, really valuable experience they'll gain from that as they head into Valpo tonight, who was a winner as well too tonight. So just another good uh, opponent coming up on Bradley's schedule as well. We'll step aside, take a time out. Let's look at some of the metrics or highlights when we come back after this. Yeah. <laughs> Click, call, or visit a store today. 42-27 is the score here at Carver Arena. Bradley leading by 15. Brian Beto, Matt McLean with you. Is Matt, let's take a look at the, uh, the first half highlights and there's some ones that really stuck out uh, especially for, for Bradley really exciting offensive performance in the first half yeah no doubt about it Bradley kind of came out uh, came out and played the way they wanted to kind of define some uh, wait, momentum and going forward and this was the highlight of the first half Terry Nolan jump in the passing lane the one-handed Tomahawk and Brad doing a good job from behind the arc too as well. Deshaun Henry knocked it one down, four-point play. Uh, Terry Nolan knocked down a three ball as well. He knocked down two of them, so did Rink Mass. So uh, just a really good job as well. Uh, the first half, Brad, they able to uh, create some extra opportunities too. Really nice pass there on the assist from Shawnee. So pretty strong first half offensively for BU in the first half. Uh, they shot 45% as we're going to look at some of these stats, Brian. Yeah. You look at the stats, you've called out 45%, holding Jackson State to 38.5%, really making difficult for a lot, uh, making life difficult for the Tigers behind the arc as well, just 22% from there. And 
Uh, we talked about it during the broadcast. Man, the bench and the rebounding. For sure. Huge. Yeah, I mean, that's that's been a key to their success this season and out rebounding their opponent by 14 in the first half and the bench points. Uh, Bradley's gotten 40% of their points all season from their bench, and you're seeing that tonight. Uh, almost 50% tonight is from their bench, so really good job. Both teams are going to want to cut down on the turnovers in the second half and see if they can do that coming in for the second 20 minutes. Yeah, one thing about the highlights that kind of you know showcased by these numbers with the bench points feels like there was a highlight of everyone in the first half no doubt a bunch about of it. different players for the Braves which is which is great to see of eight players that that scored in the first half and majority of them with over five points a good offensive performance from the Braves in the first 20 minutes we will take another time out here just a few minutes away from the second half of action here at Carver Brian Beetle Matt McLean with you Bradley up 15 you're watching the Valley on ESPN Ask your independent agent if auto owners make sense for you. Let's get ready to roll for half number two. Brian Beto, Matt McLean, Bradley leading Jackson State 42 to 27. Braves looking for their fifth win in seven times this year. Their only two blemishes came by a combined five points against Xavier and South Dakota State. As Jackson State, on the other hand, looking for their their first win of the year. And the only other time they met, a decade ago, Bradley, a nine-point win here in Peoria. Our guy, yes, Andrew Warren, led the way with 23 points. Andrew's still playing professionally overseas right now. Yep, and playing in Germany. Playing in Germany. He loves, he's no stranger to these broadcasts. And we wish him well, one of the best scorers and players here all the time and had a no good night about it. 10 years ago against Jackson State. Yeah, Brian, you tweeted before the game and Andrew Warren, uh, I saw he sent you a like on it too, so Andrew, if you're <laughs> if you're, if you're watching. My guy. Yeah, thanks for the interaction and uh, keep enjoying life in top uh, basketball league in Germany. We're, we're definitely keeping tabs with you, no doubt about it. Well, Matt, let's think about half number two, right? So the, we talked about the key being like, do you be you, whatever we want to, whatever kind of buzzwords we wanted to throw in there. And then you're like, the, the kind of the cliche thing to do right here is like, what adjustments seem to be made? But for, for the Braves, it's probably, and I don't want to lead you in anything per se, but it's probably nothing, right? It's like, just keep doing what you're doing, like play your game. Keep and doing then for things sure. will, you know, execute the way you want to execute and the way you want to play. And keep doing what shape. you want to do, no doubt about it. But at the same time, I know that they're going to want to cut down on those turnovers in the first half. 12 turnovers, uh, they, they value taking care of the ball so much and priding, okay, making the extra pass and do all that. But I mean, if it comes to the point, Take an open shot if you have it, right? I mean, it seems like maybe they're being uh, too selective almost, and that's causing them to turn the ball over maybe a little bit. Now, a lot of credit goes to Jackson State because they have uh, got Bradley to no speed doubt. up. And uh, you can see that kind of reflect in the turnover stats, no doubt about it, and the steals that Jackson State's been able to get. But Bradley's going to want to cut those down, come out, and play Bradley basketball, dis discipline, take care of the ball. Yeah, no doubt about it. I, I know... Brian Wardle uh, talked a little bit this week about sometimes he feels like the, the ball movement's been great and they're almost too unselfish yeah. at times with the usually when you hear the words like oh we, you know shot selection you think they're taking a bunch of bad shots <laughs> but in this case it might be a you know the opposite might be true well so. I think it's a really good problem to have if you got no if you got guys who are willing to find their teammates and stuff like that but at the same time you got an open shot D1 college basketball you're going to take it and you're going to make it the majority of the time so a lot of high skilled players on Bradley were capable of making those shots. Let's see if they can do it here in the second half and put this thing away. And especially when we get into Valley season, when the defenses are oh so goodness, good. Yes. If you pass up that first open in rhythm shot, you might not get another one, so you might as well take it, right? Which is why, and you see in this non-conference, Bradley's put so much emphasis of getting the ball out in transition and being quick. How many yep, times have no we doubt. seen Bradley get in the half court within three, four seconds of the possession and able to go down there and score quick? That'll be so valuable when it comes to Valley play. Jarrett helped by Childs, and that forces a difficult shot. Didn't even draw iron, and then the Braves outrun any other way. They get it into Childs, and before the double team comes, Childs is able to score. Really strong start to the second half here for Elijah Childs. Going to get that left-hand hook working baseline. 
important for him to get going here in the second half. Yeah, just his second field goal on only four shot attempts, largely in part because they double him every time he touches it down there. He's done a good job facilitating. Finding the open man as well. Got an assist in the ball game, four rebounds. And he scored in double figure figures in all six games heading into tonight. Are we seeing a zone here? Yeah, we've got a zone of this really good recognition from Jackson State. Bradley got caught ball watching there. We're gonna get a technical foul on a celebration, but yeah, Bradley switched to that zone and just the middle of it was wide open. Nobody went towards the ball. Really good play on that out of bounds to lob up. Beautiful pass and all McKinnis had to do was just flush it down. Yeah, I turned my head. I didn't even see him. Uh, was it for hanging too long? I think there was, I don't think it was for hanging. He got off the rim pretty quick. If I, if I were to guess, there was maybe some words said afterwards. Maybe, I don't know. That's light if it's for hanging on the rim there, but regardless, free yeah, most of my Yeah, most of my hangs on the rim back <laughs> today were a little bit longer than that. Yeah, you know? all of mine were on an eight yeah. foot rim though, so. <laughs> fair, fair enough. So Child, that's gonna be on obviously McKinnis. But he does now have nine points, six rebounds. Yeah, and he played all but one minute in the first half as well too. McKinnis was a, a catalyst for their success in the first half. No doubt about it. All right, Boya, near half court here. Gives to Nolan, bounce pass back door, Tabanainen puts it in off the glass on the find from Nolan. Yeah, Jared just kind of fell asleep there. He knew he's on Tabanainen, whose scouting report is, hey, this guy's gonna hang out on the three-point line, right? Nope, Vile sees his man sleeping, cuts back door, easy layup. Great recognition there by Vile Tabanainen. The fourth dime tonight from Nolan. It doesn't get easier than that, too. Seven points for Tabanainen. James fades. And it's off the rim. Good defensive sequence by the Braves. Out to Tabanainen. In his face is Evans immediately. Back to East near the timeline. Here comes the high ball screen. East has got a step. Goes under, back on top. Finds Tabanainen, ball fake. Back out to East. Good closeouts by Jackson State. So East goes inside the lane and is too strong with the jumper. Jarrett squares up, knifes his way in, and is fouled. Yeah, strong move there, able to get to the cup. He's fouled, he paid for that one, went down, but hey, gets an opportunity for two free throws. He gets up smiling, but strong move, great recognition to get his man off dribble here. He just beats Nolan to the middle. I'm not sure, I think they're gonna get Nolan on that on the hip check. Did they get, was it Nolan or Boya? I think it was Nolan. Yeah, that's number three, two on Nolan. So Kingsby's going to come in for him. And that was Jarrett's actually first miss from the foul line this year. He had made his first nine. And he does split a pair. When we saw it was like the third possession of the game. Jackson State came out. We told you they play a lot of different defense. They came out in a zone on maybe one or two possessions. Other than that, we've seen pre basically pretty much man-to-man uh, -man defense so far, so uh, the rest of the way. Be interesting to see if they throw a couple more wrinkles in here in the second half, because we know they got different defenses on that scouting report, no doubt. East on the handoff, gets it back on the give oh, and go. Offensive screen. foul on Boya, that's number three. On Ari. So here comes Henry for him. James again, the leading facilitator off the curl. Jarrett with the finger roll. Yeah, too strong. J Jared just felt his defender on his back there as he came around that curl on the weak side. He just takes it all the way in. Too easy there. Jared, you know he's going to be a score for them. He looked to score there, no doubt. Tabanainen goes strong and draws contact. 
Yeah, one of the underrated aspects of Vila Tava 9 in this game, we feel like we talk about it almost every broadcast because so many teams say they see that scouting report, they know he's going to shoot, right? He's been able to take his guys, his defenders, off dribble at pretty high frequency this season, something he worked on a lot in the offseason, no doubt. Yeah, I mean, when you see and you look at the numbers, you say, okay, he leads the team in three-pointers made. He's fourth in the Valley in three-pointers made. You want to obviously protect against that perimeter. And he shoots at a high clip, too. And he shoots at a very high clip. So the ability for him to, to get to the basket, not shy away from contact there. He now has eight points. Two of five shooting. He's four of four from the foul line. The sophomore out of Helsinki. This is one of three games in the Valley tonight. Southern, an 85-64 win over North Dakota. And Valparaiso, an 18-point win over Purdue Northwest. The only other two games that are both gone final. Nice defense there yeah. by East. Tough runner is no good. Great defensive position for Bradley, and here we go. Out to the races as well. Transition three, perhaps. Stepping to his left and burying the three is Tavaninen. What a second it. half for him. No doubt he shakes his head. He said, he can't give me that much space. Just a quick shot fake to create that separation. Vile Tavaninen leading the Braves, 12 points. Seven of those here in the second half, just under four minutes played here in half number two. Jarrett tries to answer and does on the other end. A much needed response there by Jarrett, who's himself having a big second half. He's the leading scorer in this ball game with 17. And we got a timeout. Time out on the floor. We'll take it with him. 16-08 to go. Bradley up 18. The official sports medicine provider for Bradley Athletics. Brian Beto, Matt McLean with you. And Matt, we've we've harped on the success of the bench tonight, and for good reason. But how about the guys, you know, that were in the starting lineup tonight here in the second half as well. They had a good first half, but the second half, Nolan, Tava Nine, and Monster starts to open up this lead to 18 for Bradley. Yeah, no doubt about it. Really good job coming out of the second half. Uh coming in and just, you know, setting the tempo here for the rest of this ball game and coming out, extending that lead and looking good right now for the Braves. Foul away from the ball. And that was a very short-lived segment. <laughs> We're gonna go to break again. 15.55 to go. Bradley's still up 18. You're watching the Valley on ESPN. It's supposed to be where it belongs. Sonic Queso Burger. Braves up 18 here. Get a look at the head man for, for Jackson State. You know, we made a football reference in the first half. We appeased the Deion Sanders. I mentioned the Packers. I can't not bring up the fact that Walter Payton went to Jackson State to appease us Bears fans as well. Hey, sweetness. Anything you can get sweetness in the, in the broadcast, that's a win for sure. That foul, that basket is not going to count. I think it's going to stay here. I yeah, think it was away floor. from the play. That'll be the fourth team foul. Fifth team foul, beg your pardon, on Jackson State. Henry tosses mm. one up and scores, and I almost laugh because he makes it look so easy at times. That's 11 for Deshaun Henry. The pure strength and body control that you see from Deshaun Henry uh, it, over and over again. It's just its crazy for a guy built like that to be able to move and get to the rim, and man, great move there for Henry. 11 to shoot. Quinlan wing three. Kingsby and the Braves got numbers ahead to McAdoo who lays it in. Tremendous speed there from Kingsby. I mean, he got to the other half of the court in less than a second. It seemed like the defense just kind of sacked over to him. Easy layup opportunity there for McAdoo who converts. He's got eight points off the bench. Good help from Tavaninen and more numbers for the Braves. It's three on two. Up to Henry and a great anticipation, almost like a safety. 
Again, another football reference is Jarrett. <laughs> Flips one up and scores on the other end, coast to coast for Jarrett. Tough play by Jarrett. He picks it off on one end, just kind of almost lacks it, basically brings it up. Bradley doesn't stop the ball at all, so he just says, I'll take it all the way to the hoop if you don't mind. And he doesn't mind. That's an easy layup there for Jarrett. 19 points for him. Here goes Talvin Einen, flipped out to Mass, pick and pop, Ray is in and out. Good look. Very good look, nice little flip over the left hand uh, there for over the shoulder on Talvin Einen after he got doubled off the switch. And Rankle knocked down that shot if you give him the opportunity. Just flipped out. Oh, he got away with one there, it looked like. Maybe an extra step, but they're gonna call the foul first. That's yeah, gonna be at Kingsby. Two on Danier. And Jared will go back to the line. He's got 19 for Jackson State. Not feeling too well. And it looked like uh, Jared's not feeling too well. And might be a slight delay here as so with 14 yeah. minutes left Brian uh, Bradley up 20 so at this stage in the game you're just thinking He remembered my name. Because it's your name. That's simple human sense. Ask your independent agent if auto owners make sense for you. Back here in Peoria, they continue just to, to clean up the floor around the foul line ahead of two free throws coming up for Jared. And he'll come back and shoot a pair with Bradley leading 57 to 37. Brian Beto, Matt McLean, back with you. It'll be two shots for Jarrett. He's feeling much better. Missed the first, however. You see something new every day, don't you? That was the first time. That was the first time for me. <laughs> Definitely feel better. No, yeah, never see. Yeah, seeing them much better. And yeah. They they talked it over, and again these. I know the first, you know, thought is, and they want to speculate is, you know, we want to make sure we sanitize everything. Good no job by the Braves and and then the officials to call everything over just to clean everything up. But uh, a bucket on the other end for Jackson State, lead back to 18. And now McAdoo has it for the Braves. Back to Nolan, who goes baseline. Bounce pass to a cutting Kingsby who regains, might have had it partially blocked. And here come the Tigers the other way. Evans to Jarrett. Drives in nearly at his pocket pick, but they're going to get Nolan, and that's number four. I think it was uh, Nolan, Kingsby. Oh, they actually, got Kingsby. Brian, yeah, Kingsby, okay. that's who they brought up there so that King from behind. So the Braves caught him 
I was a kind of break, but no one bought it. Like, oh, it might have been me, but it's not going to be on him because that would have been number four. So that'll be in Kingsby instead. That's three still on Danier. Out of the inbounds pass, the three is no good. Raised quickly up ahead. Here's Nolan one on one. Mm. Goes up. Count it oh. and the foul. Give him a little continuation, huh? And one for Terry Nolan. Goes right into his man. They call the block. He still flips it up. Great strength there from Terry Nolan to stick with it. So Nolan does convert on the old-fashioned three-point play. And that's four fouls on James. So some sort of foul issue starting to amount. Nobody in serious, serious trouble for Bradley. Boya, Nolan, and Kingsby, however, do have three. Three left wing from Jared is no good. Offensive rebound, McKinnis lays it in. Yeah, way to stick with it, and the ball got knocked out of Mass hands, and McKin <clears throat> McKinnis was there to clean it up. Mast had it poked away, and numbers the other way for Jackson State. Jarrett had it influenced by Nolan, but it's cleaned up by the Tigers, and a timeout taken by the Braves, as the lead has shrunk to 17. Twelve thirty-eight to go. And Matt, it's been kind of teetering around this margin. Yeah. Really, most of the most of the evening, it looks like the Braves are really starting to push away. Jackson State not giving up. Credit them, and then coming back, they've gotten good performances from Jared, who's got 21. McKinnis, who's got 11. And the Braves, you know, led in double figures. We talked about Nolan and Tavanina. Nolan leading the way with 13, Tavanina with 12, Henry with 11 for Bradley tonight. Yeah, and it was a 15 point advantage for Bradley at halftime. They bumped it up to, uh, at one point, I think Bradley's largest lead was up to 22, but Jackson State gave him a lot of credit. Fighting back here, 17 point game. That'd be crucial here for them to keep trying to chip away at this before Bradley can be too far out of reach. East out of the timeout, great look and good touch by the sophomore point guard. Yeah, the defense just kind of sagged off him there, and East just rises up that little left hand jumper from about four, from about ten feet, excuse me, and able to connect on it. Really good look there for Sean East. Hicks fades from the baseline. Tabanainen has it. He'll push. Skips the corner to East, who tiptoes the sideline, is able to stay in. Dribbles out into Nolan. He's got an open look at a three. What do you know? Another assist for Sean East. Terry Nolan feeling it tonight. He's up to 16, a three ball for Nolan as the Braves drop back into a 3-2 zone off the make. That's his fourth assist for East. And as you mentioned, Nolan, another three. He's got 16. To lead Bradley. Jarrett, baseline, mm. somehow gets it out as he was caught up in the air. Shot missed, top of nine in the rebound. And again, he goes the other way. Other corner this time for Nolan. Step back three. Not this time. Taylor the other way. He'll pull up from deep. And Boya tracks it down. Yeah, way to run the floor there by Ari Boya to get back off of that miss. Come back, get the rebound, and get another possession here for Bradley and Elijah Childs. This is where he thrives off that double. Great ball movement. Touch pass to Boya. Great position. Jump ball. And a jump ball is going to be called. It'll stay with Bradley. And the Braves will have it when we come back. 10.50 to go. Bradley by 22. The official sports medicine provider for Bradley Athletics. Sixty-five forty-three, Bradley on top of Jackson State. Brian Vito, Matt McLean, with you. Good. Brian Wardle is the Braves' 
We'll drop something out of the timeout. They lead by 22. Lobbed up to Childs. Backs his way in and Ooh. finishes off the glass. Super strong move there from Elijah Childs. We usually see a lot of finesse from me. He took a straight shoulder into his defender's chest and he comes up with the steal here. They're swimming around his defender, able to get his hand on it and get a steal. East goes left side, stops on a dime, too strong. Nice hang time there too from East, but uh, kind of a four shot there. So he got himself caught up in the air with no outlet, so he had to throw it up. And a little strong on the air ball on the far end. Step back jumper from 17 is good by Ken Evans. Yeah, pretty jumper, nice stroke there by Evans. Childs has it right side, looking for Tavanine and instead goes to Nolan. Nolan off the ball screen, steps back from three. What a great job there by Sean East to come on the back side there. Now it looked like McKinnis on that rebound. He didn't think anybody was around. He kind of brought it down low. That's one of the, you don't want to bring that ball down low once you get to the rebound. Sean East sniffed that out right away. Get the jump ball, change the possession arrow. They don't get the ball right away, but those are just, that's just a winning play there by Sean East. Something that's not going to come up in the scorebook, but Absolutely. smart heads up play. Absolutely. Braves switching up defensively on this trip. Intended for McKinnis, hit on his way up. Yeah, you can see McKinnis, how, how such a valuable player he is. I mean, big body, he's able to get over there for that lob and corral it. The pass was a little bit off, but really nice wingspan and a lot of length, athletic. He's had a very nice game tonight, impressive what I've seen. No doubt about it, 13 points with uh, two more in the hopper here. Kinnis, as we said coming in, right around his projected averages, came in at 13 and 12, right now at 14 and 9. Yeah, rebound away from a double double tonight. They're going to get a loose ball foul here, it looks like. They're going to ring it up on East, or was it a lane, viol a lane violation? It looks like they're going to reshoot on East. And I think they're going to say that he can't he can't make the substitution because this is the makeup free throw. So he's got to stay in. Luke Kingsby, Kingsby was set to come in for East, but since it's a reshoot, they can't make the substitution. Second one is good. Here we go. So Kingsby in for East. And Jackson State's going to apply some uh, full court pressure here. Well, it was a little token pressure there as they drop back. But maybe just start to throw a little something at Bradley, get him thinking about, hey, we might start throwing some stuff at you. So 20-point uh, game here in the last 10 minutes. They're going to try whatever they can to get crawl back into this one. Nice flare by Nolan. Childs trying to clean it up. Kicks it out to Kingsby. Back into Nolan. Flipped out towards the top, back down to Boya on the bounce pass. Calling for Tavaninen, looking for help, six to shoot. Boya backs in, fades baseline, too strong off the glass. Evans left-handed, mm. one-handed pass, and McInnes is fouled. Yeah, Boya's gonna pick up his fourth there. That's what it's a cardinal sin as a, as a defender. You guys see ball, and man, that ball's going right at Ari Boya if he would've had his head turned. Instead, he's late getting to it, and he picks up the foul. Going to go right back to the free throw line for McKinnis. Yeah, both teams now in the bonus. McKinnis will shoot two here. He's three or four from the line. I'll make it four or five. Again, if you're just joining us, Bradley led by 15 at halftime. Lead was up to 24 at one point. That was 67 to 43. So, very modest 5 0 run for Jackson State.
Yeah, Jackson State, they, they shoot the free throws at a pretty high clip at 77.5% coming into the game. They've uh, 10 to 16 tonight, but McKinnis has knocked down a couple big ones here to cut it down to 18. A loose ball foul here, fighting through a screen. They're going to get McKinnis. Yeah. Big foul, too. That's four on him now. So Childs will shoot one in the bonus. And pardon me, Brian, that's on Wilson. That's just his first. So still three fouls on McKinnis. Child, six points, five rebounds. When you see Childs with six points late in the game, you think, oh, maybe he didn't have a great shooting now. But that's not the case. He's three of yeah. five. He just hasn't needed to. They've they've really tried to take the ball out of his hands. And no he's doubt. done a good job facilitating. And the rest of the, the squad has, has really picked up the scoring load with Nolan with 16 and Henry 11, Calvin 9 and 12. East with seven. McAdoo with eight. And we've talked all year about the, the leader that Elijah Childs has become. There's, there's a lot of guys, you know, we talked about it earlier. Uh, Elijah Childs scored double figures in every game of the season, but uh, I, knowing what we know about Elijah Childs, he doesn't care, right? He wants to get his teammates involved, and that double figure mark is, isn't something he goes out and he's trying to get, right? So a uh, really good job, of just like you said, taking what the defense has given him tonight. He's gotten his teammates involved, no doubt. Kings be the other way. Tavaninen is wow. left alone from three and can't do that. Just a complete miscommunication there. It looked like Jarrett was trying to get over and just kind of nobody was on the ball. Can't leave the ball, especially with Vili Tavaninen at the top of the three-point line. Baseline deuce is good from McKinnis on the other end. He's seven shot. of eight from the floor. He's having a great game. Making some difficult shots from two, buries that one. Kingsby, they show on him out to Childs, who had it stripped and stolen by Darian Wilson. He bounce pass in the corner for Jarrett. Drives his way in, and they're gonna get Childs for a foul. Tough take for sure. Paid the price on that one. Going down amongst the trees, but Jarrett gets fouled. Nice take. He's gonna have free throws after this break. And get reliable internet with top-notch coverage with security included. No antlers on the table. Click, call, or visit a store today. 72-51 is the score. 7.25 to go. Brian Beto, Matt McClain with you. As the Braves look to, to close out what would be their fifth win of the season. And you know, credit Jackson State. We've seen a lot from Jarrett McKinnis. They're tied with game highs with 19 points. Free throws upcoming for for Jared as well. But you, you kind of knew that going in, right? Like those are the two guys that are going to probably score in double figures. And the Braves have done a really good job limiting pretty much everyone else. No doubt. Um, to this point. Yeah, absolutely. You know, those McKinnis and Jared are first team swag for a reason preseason, right? I mean, they're picked on that first team. So Bradley scouting report said, hey, I mean, if these guys are going to come out and get theirs, nobody else. Uh, we don't want anybody else getting anything right outside of McKinnis and Jared who have combined for 38 points just 13 for the rest of the squad so really good job by Bradley to kind of limit what those guys can do and the influence they can have on the game yeah, and even McKinnis while he's he's been really efficient some of the shots especially inside the arc they've been they've been contested it's just sure. McKinnis has been uh, up to the challenge tonight to, to knock a couple of those down against seven of eight from the floor. Yeah, really good half-court one-on-one player. He can rise up, he can shoot over a hit defender, and a uh, really good job hitting the boards as well, for, uh, getting a couple second chance opportunities. Knocked out of bounds, it'll go back to Jackson State. And that's what, you know, Jackson State's gonna bring, especially as they get into to SWAC, is they're gonna disrupt you on really on both ends of the floor, and seen it at times, and. Give them credit, and again, they, we've harped on it almost at nausea, no yeah, pun intended sure. <laughs> here, but there's, uh, they had a tough schedule, and you know they're, they're gonna give their opponents problems as they get into SWAC, especially with uh, the, that disruption. Different look here for Bradley coming out in the zone. 
Jackson State realizes they go for the lob. I think the bas basket interference on that. It was but. close. And Massa then got a, head out of, a hand out of the head to Tavaninen, who lays it in. What a great pass there. There's a touch pass there from Elisha Childs over to get it to him. And an easy bucket there for Vile Tavaninen running the floor. He's got 17 on the night. Yeah, Vile having a heck of a night. Jackson State's got to get somebody in the middle of the zone. There it is. That's where it's going to break apart for Bradley. But great rebound from Elijah Childs coming out from the wing. That's his sixth. Run Ahead to Henry, who flushes it in, and the foul. Great pass, and Henry always is available. He flushes it down the two-handed jam. Bradley Bench loving it. They throw it down on his head, young man. Just Sean Henry doing it all. So much strength. We see a great pass from Nolan. And just the strength from Henry. And he knocks in the free throw. See more pressure here from Bradley, just kind of extending the game and winding down the clock. And we get a trap there at half court. That's what they're going to look for. But then they got numbers coming the other end. Great alley oop. Yeah, and that's McKinnis again on a good find. Got good hands around the rim. Now, eight of nine from the floor. He's got 21 points. Man, he got up there, Brian. His eyes were equal with the rim. That was, that was some serious elevation. Skip Henry, pump fake. Shovels it under to Childs charge. and an offensive foul first. That's going to go on Henry. I believe that's the third charge drawn by Jackson State. This time it's Ken Evans. Even with the charge, we referenced earlier the efficiency of a Ja'Shawn Henry. It's on display again tonight. He's got 14 points on five shot attempts. Man, that's not too shabby. <laughs> Get to the free throw line and make him the most of his opportunities. I mean, that's his M.O. I mean, he's, he's able to, to do it night in and night out. Seven for eight from the free throw line. Just the efficiency just skyrocketing. McClellan. This is the Braves again coming out in that zone, really extending it, forcing it deep on Jackson State. Evans to McClellan, seven to shoot. East all up on him. James, teardrop, batted around, batted out. And one more for Jackson State. Underneath McKinnis in the paint, too strong. And again, good Second fight time this by time Hicks. by Hicks. Yeah. He, Saved the first attempt and now does it again. Right wing three McClellan. Oh, and he draws the foul. What a possession by Hicks. Such a straight heart and hustle, keeping that possession alive for his ball club. Gotta love seeing that. And that'll be the 10th team foul on Bradley. So double bonus for Jackson State. Talk about earning your, your points here. I mean, this is just Hicks. He's just battling it out there. I mean, he, he just went at it, and he gets two free throw opportunities for his hard work. Well-deserved bucket. Michael Tate will come in for Jackson State. Seventy-seven, fifty-seven, just inside of five to play. And the Braves will be at home Saturday night against Miami of Ohio. Childs, here's the double, dribbles out of it, zips it to East, back to Tavaninen, has got a step right in his finger roll off the bottom of the rim, but a whistle and a foul is going to be called on Jackson State. And maybe it was off of the ball, but no, they're going to get it on the shot. Tom and I just kind of got hip checked as he went in for the attempt. Just the late call and get two free throws. It. Yeah, no, no doubt about it. As you see him kind of slide over, it was attempted uh, charge. It looked like Hicks was going to come over and try to take it, but there wasn't much contact, so he didn't go down. And late call on the block. He's already at a season high of 17 points. I believe he now has 11 in the second half. Check me on that if I'm wrong, but I, I want to say he had seven at the break. 
Five of eight shooting, five of five from the line, three of five from three for the sophomore. And that just tied his career high with points. He had 18 last year against Illinois State on what January you know? 22nd. There's a new one. And it looks like on December, <laughs> December 17th, he sets a new career high. 19 points now for Vile. James gets it back near the timeline. East on him. On the down screen, Evans to Hicks. And they're bunched up in the corner. Eight to shoot. Hicks backing down on Childs, holding his ground. Lost it. Double dribble, double dribble, right? Uh, out of bounds anyways. Out of first, yeah. yeah. Yeah, great defense on that entire possession there. It was a couple times where Jackson State tried to run a back or a, a back cut to try to get a backdoor opportunity, and Bradley didn't bite on any of them. And then just kind of ride Hicks out of bounds there to get the turnover. So he used to bring it up. And Bradley trying to get into the 80 point plus territory for their fourth consecutive game. I was gonna say it's nearly shooting practice, but I didn't want to jinx it, so I waited. And he missed it. They, eventually, I didn't say it, but they'll get another chance. It was the reverse psychology uh, curse of the commentator, right? <laughs> exactly. East up for Childs. Ooh. And a whistle and a foul. Recognition by McGinnis because otherwise that could have done some damage to the rim. <laughs> no doubt about Elijah Childs went well above the rim to catch that one. He's going to have free throws. 3.32 to go. Bradley trying to close out the Tigers. But it would be nothing without the Fritos and the cheese. And cheese is like the hype man. <laughs> Sonic Fritos Chili Cheese Junior Wrap. I got you. Yeah. Brian Vito, Matt McLean back with you, but you know, we got, I guess, kind of a celebrity in attendance tonight, Matt. Yeah, this is uh, Thomas Snacks Lee. He, he kind of had his moment of infamy as a team manager last year on Jackson State's ball club. He came in as a, as a manager on senior night at the end of the regular season and hit a three. He went viral and it actually became the SB's uh, cannot stop watching moment of the season last year. and. Uh, it kind of became a viral sensation for, you know, never giving up on your dreams. And uh, he even came over and talked to us before yeah. the game. Really nice, really nice stand-up yeah. young man. And uh, he just kind of said, you know, it doesn't matter how you look. You can achieve your goals. He wants to use his platform, even just from something minor that happened, you know, making a three on your senior night, right, as a manager. He hopes to inspire people with low self-esteem and just a really cool story. And, an SB winner for something that was just uh, a really great moment earlier this year. That was earlier this year, Brian. That's so believe. crazy. <laughs> and it's so insane that not only does he get the opportunity, but he just absolutely takes advantage and buries no the about shot. It. He, he, he had that swag. He came in the game, checked in, shot the three. Everyone at Jackson State was, was riled up. Back when we had fans at games. Oh, man. <laughs> Can you? I love the cardboard cutouts, don't yeah. get me wrong. They're great, and you can still order them. We're still getting, let's get those packed in for the for the Miami and the Loyola games coming up. No but doubt it was still it. no replacement for the actual thing. Snacks, keep doing your, your job, man. You're doing a great job and inspiring people all across the, all across the, the country. So uh, keep it up, young man. Nolan for three. Tracked down by Jarrett. And the bucket is good. Back to a 22-point game. Two and a half to go. East is run off the ball screen up top. Boya. Oh, I didn't even look at the three. <laughs> I was wondering if you were going to say something about that. Oh, they get the charge. Whoa, Ooh, screen that. and roll. It looked like Boya was going right to the bucket. Had his progress impeded. Yeah, and they're going to call uh, a char uh, charge on that one. OK. And that's actually five on Boya, so he'll have to, to come out. Uh, Kingsby is in. McAdoo is in. And Nolan, who was excellent tonight. No doubt about it. With, you know, statistically at 16 points, 6 of 12 shooting, at 5 assists, 3 Knocked steals. Knocked down three threes. Yeah. yeah, he was all over the place. You kind of said, hey, that's the stocking stuff for where oh, Brian Wardle, he definitely wants that stocking, no doubt about it. 
Kingsby's whistling for one, that's number four. And Jarrett will, will shoot two here to close things out. And again, if you're just, if you're just joining us, uh, Jarrett had a moment where he was sick at the foul line a little bit of go, but I know, um, and rightfully so, you don't want to make light of anything. You want obviously, you know, precautions and go through everything, but he, he's okay. He's feeling fine, just, just had a moment. And we, so, we did get it confirmed, Brian, from a Bradley spokesperson. They followed all protocols. Yep. Jackson State's trainer cleared him to come back into the game. He's fine. And uh, Bradley's staff came out. They cleared the floor. Everything was all right. They sanitized. So uh, just another wrinkle in 2020. You, you see that something like that happen, and you think worst worst case scenario. Uh, that's just kind of human nature, right? But uh, no they followed all the proper protocols. Yep, and he's had a great game uh, tonight, and he'll check out. And maybe now that everything's okay, I can I can make the joke that maybe he had the same pizza that Michael Jordan had in Utah back in back hey, in 1997. You might be onto night. something. You might be onto something. <laughs> Antonio Thomas uh, checks in for the Braves, the sophomore out of Memphis. Darius Hanna, the freshman, also in the game as well. Henry, right side of the lane, draws more contact, and he'll shoot his ninth and tenth free throws of the night. And he is certainly in the conversation. We talked about SB's nominations, stuff like that. He's probably nominated for player of the night tonight for Blue Cross Blue Shield. But we're going to give it to Vile Tavanina. Yeah, right. So Vile Tavanina, 19 points with 142 to go. That sets a career high for him. Five for 10 shooting from the field. He knocks down three three-pointers, seven rebounds. So Vila has done it a little bit of it all, ran the floor, knocked down some threes, some really good defense off of the ball. Six for six from the free throw line. Vila Tavanayan, tonight's player of the game. And through it all, tonight's player of the game, Vila, is brought to you by Blue Cross and Blue Shield of Illinois. Hand of the board. And Hannah had a really good game against Oakland. The, the game Henry was out with that with that illness, 12 points, eight rebounds and a block. One of the top recruits out of Milwaukee and really the entire state of Wisconsin. You see, you can see why. A lot of, a yeah. lot of flashy plays for Darius Hannah. He can play well above the rim and exciting guy, a prospect for Bradley. The coaching staff is really, really excited about his future. Antonio Thomas in the ball game as well. So McAdoo will inbound to Thomas. He's guarded by McClellan. Rick Mass in the post. He, he played really well. He had that good burst in the towards the end of the first half. No and doubt. He's one of those guys that we talked about at the beginning. The more minutes he gets, and you could say this about a lot of guys, but the more minutes he gets, just the better and more comfortable he's going to be. And that's been the case in the opening seven games. And it's huge for even even this minute. You think, okay, it's a minute six, right? It's the end of the game. But he gets in. It's another shot. It's another. You see the game. Like, you're getting familiar to Carver Arena and what it's like playing in here because, I mean, folks, Carver Arena isn't on Bradley's campus. These guys don't get very many opportunities to come in here and practice and play and get shots up. That's why it was so crucial for Bradley to, to schedule this non-conference with a lot of home games early in the season to get these guys in here and get acclimated with what they're going to be playing in all season. Under a minute to go. James has it blocked out of bounds. It'll stay with Jackson State, and we can't overstate the fact that this is the seventh game already for the Braves. No doubt. So many teams have been limited to one, two, even in the conference, and to have these minutes has just been crucial for a team, again, trying to peak at the end of the season, which they've done every year yep. in, this, in this administration, this coaching staff, and they're continuing to get better here again. Yeah, and he, they, six games in 18 days to open the season. They, they get about 10 off. Finals, that's over, and now you're going to play three games in six days. It's just another part of this gauntlet that 2020 is going to bring us. And Bradley, they've passed this first test with flying colors tonight with this victory over Jackson State. Yeah, I think both teams can certainly take some positives uh, away from this one. Certainly uh, the Braves, who, again, for the fourth straight night, have scored 80-plus. And, and Jackson State 
you know, a team that has been tested. We talked about they'll see how they compete against Iowa State this weekend. Yeah. But Bradley's going to hold another opponent at 60 or under. And that'll be the fifth time in seven games that they were able to do just that. We know some of the quality of their opponents as well. So, Matt, overall, a really productive night for the Braves, a balanced effort. So it seems like every, I know Elijah Childs has been in double figures, has led the Braves in scoring a lot, but they continue to get contributions across the board. Yeah, a lot of guys scored tonight, really good contributions across the board, as you mentioned, Brian. Bradley comes out, hang their head on defense as always. Hold their opponents to 60 points, score in the 80s. That's another part, a successful blueprint for Bradley, as we've seen time and time again under Brian Wardle tonight as another chapter to that book. That's going to wrap it up here from Carver Arena. We hope you enjoyed the broadcast tonight for my partner, Matt McClain, and our production crew at Chef Tech. I'm Brian Vito. The final from Peoria, it's the Bradley Braves 83. Jackson State Tiger 60, you've been watching the Valley on ESPN.